In November of 2019, the National Department of Health released the Rifampicin Resistant Clinical Guide, a detailed reference guide for managing rifampicin resistant TB in South Africa. In part one of this tutorial series on drug resistant TB, we will briefly cover the diagnosis of RIF resistant TB and describe the key RRTB drugs available in South Africa. I am Dr. Madeleine Muller and let us get started with this Yandisa tutorial. Any patient who is gene expert positive, RIF resistant qualifies for one of the RIF resistant regimens and will be enrolled onto a drug resistant TB program. The next most important question is determining which other key drugs may no longer be working, especially whether the patient is fluoroquinolone sensitive or resistant. To do this, all patients with a RIF resistant result must have a sputum sent for a DRTB reflex test, a complete battery of tests that will provide us with all the information we need to design a regimen. The DRTB reflex test is available at all NHLS laboratories. This DRTB test include all of the following. Firstly, a smear, which tells us how infective our patient is. Secondly, a first line, line probe assay, a PCR test that specifically tests for both rifampicin and INH resistance, and also establish the presence of two mutations that select specifically for INH resistance. They're called INHA and CATG. Thirdly, a second line, line probe assay, which will check both fluoroquinolone and injectable susceptibility. And fourthly, a TB culture, the only test that confirms the presence of live bacilli. And lastly, a phenotypic DST, where the laboratory will do targeting testing depending on the LPA results. So for example, if that first line LPA showed INH acceptability, the lamb will double check the INH sensitivity on a phenotypic DST. Once you have your DRTB result, you can now classify the type of TB that your patient has. To classify, we still think in terms of the two key first-line drugs, which is rifampicin and INH, and the two key second-line drugs, fluoroquinolones and the now shelved injectables. If the bacilli is only resistant to rifampicin, we call it RRTB. If the bacilli are resistant to both first-line TB drugs, INH and rifampicin, we would call that multidrug resistant TB or MDRTB. And these can be differentiated in whether there is only one INH mutation or dual mutations. If the bacilli are resistant to both first-line drugs as well as the injectable, so that means it's still sensitive to fluoroquinolone, we would call that pre-XDR, but in practice it's still treated with the MDR-TB long regimen. But the most concerning of all of our different classifications is if the bacilli are resistant to both first-line drugs, rifampicin and INH, and is also fluoroquinolone resistant. This will include our pre-XDR patients fluoroquinolone resistant, but might still have second-line sensitivity, and also the traditional XDR-TB patients where none of these drugs are susceptible. In practice, we will treat these two groups exactly the same. Injectable sensitivity is no longer relevant. So now let us look at the drugs we have available at this moment in time to treat drug-resistant TB. Our RRTB drugs has been grouped by the WHO into three groups of drugs. Group A is your Mercedes-Benz of all our RRTB drugs. Absolutely essential and always part of the intensive phase where feasible. Bedaquilin, our newest TB drug, has revolutionized our RRTB programs. It does have the small risk of increasing the QT interval and requires ECG monitoring. Levofloxacin, our fluoroquinolone of choice together with pedaquilin, has been with us since the early MDR-TB days and is usually included throughout the regimen. Once pedaquilin is completed, moxifloxacin may be used instead. Linezolid makes up the third key group A drug. Unfortunately, it is a risk of bone marrow suppression with possible anemia or neutropenia especially early in TB treatment when patients are already suppressed due to the TB disease. Next are our Group B drugs. These are our Toyotas, solid and reliable and added where possible. Clofazamine, relatively new in our regimens, has the unfortunate side effect of sometimes causing an orange hue in light-skinned patients and darkening of African skin. It does eventually wash out but can be unpleasant for our patients. 
Drizodone has been around for quite some time and is known for its neuro and psychiatric side effects, most notably peripheral neuropathy. And lastly is our group C drugs. These are the Tatas and are usually used to augment a regimen or used when some of our group A or B drugs are not tolerated. They include the well-known three first-line TB drugs, so INH but used at a high dose, ethambutol and PZA, but also included are useful drugs but quite toxic drugs, for example amikacin, which has a high risk of hearing loss and kidney damage, and ethionamide and pus, known for their gastric side effects. Group C also include two powerful newish drugs, delaminate, an expensive drug used in XDR patients and rescue regimens, and merepinum, a drug that needs to be given IVI BD for six months and only found in specialized centers. Excellent, we can now diagnose and classify the type of RRTB for our patient and have a bit of an understanding of the drugs available. In part two of this series, we will focus on the regimen specifically for our fluoroquinolone sensitive patients or what we used to call the MDRTB regimens.